Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to a brand new Life After video. And today we have a new update that just dropped out. I'm kind of late on revealing this update, but they've added a couple new things, a couple exciting new things, which is the dark shift. You can already do this since you're combat level 10. There is a normal difficulty and there's a nightmare difficulty, which starts from combat level 60. So we already completed this. Actually, the timing doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what time you get on this boss, but you do get really good rewards. As you can see, it says 12 minutes to complete to get these, 10 minutes to complete this, and eight minutes to get this reward. And this reward is actually pretty good. You can get a gold evolution gear voucher, a advanced chip, you can get a gold drone voucher, mojo agent, uh, those are kind of useless, but the only real good reward is gold evolution gear voucher, the advanced chip, and gold drone voucher. These vouchers, once you get enough tickets of these vouchers, you can exchange them and get yourself either a drone formula or a howitzer formula or, you know, whatever else there is, like a gun formula. So like howitzer, type 95, blah, blah, blah. But I already opened one and I got a advanced chip. So I wouldn't say it is that bad. The rewards are actually quite decent. Apart from Dark Ship, they've added a new and the most important thing is starting from February 5th, you will be able to claim this title, New Fortune. I don't understand how this is going to work because it says fe from February 11th till 18th, but you can already claim it tomorrow, which today is the 4th. Tomorrow will be the 5th for me. Don't know when this video will be released, probably the 4th, maybe the 5th for you guys depends on the time zones but yeah the, claiming this don't forget to claim this and from 11 february your xp will be doubled from your assistance quests and duty boxes which are those right over here um, these are the duty boxes so instead of 324k you will get 648k for example you know so your xp is going to be doubled same goes with assistance quests which are those so yeah, let me just claim this real quick because I need it. So yeah, make sure you don't miss that out. Make sure you do not miss that out. It's very important and it's going to get you leveling pretty quick. Now they've added another thing. They added quite a lot of stuff, which I'll get into later. First, let's go to Hope 101. I want to, guys, I want to show you guys something new. They've something interesting they've added. And oh my gosh, that's a lot. Of, see, if you check on, if you check my buffs right over here, I have a new buff which is this pure blessing team up with your roommate and stay nearby to get the effect damage to monsters increases by five percent that is unlocked by going to hope 101 and going in this shop right here next to the furniture shop just go right side and then talk to amber she is the one that's gonna give you a cohab ring you need to have a cohabitation though for this to happen so if you don't have a roommate you cannot get this ring and if you don't know how to cohab or get a roommate, go check out my video, which I uploaded probably one year or two years ago. But yeah, um, here you talk to her and then your cohab has to be with you next to you in a team. First things first, it costs you 10k gold bars to make that ring, which is 10,000 gold bars. Um, once you make a ring, you can upgrade it, which means it's going to get stronger and give you more bonuses. To upgrade the ring, you'll need to come with your roommate. You must have a pair of pure blessing of the same level and a certain amount of friendliness. So to upgrade it, you'll need more friendliness. For the first ring, you will need to have 15,000 friendliness points. And here you can see same fate, 17k, and here's 20k. So I would need to get 33,000 more points to get the ring level 2. On the screen, I will put how much you need friendliness for each ring level. And you can see what attributes it gives. As for the one ring level, you get damage to monsters increased by 5%. Once you reach 50 friendliness points and upgrade your ring, you will get damage to monsters increased by 5%. And the damage from monsters you get is reduced by 5% and so on and so on. And then the list goes on. As you can see, if you get 500,000 friendliness points, you will get that and that attributes as it's listed down below. To the outfits and zoom in and you can actually see the ring on the hand right here see there's actually a ring so that's what they've added that's really cool i don't know but that's awesome and if you do area operations or you know weekly missions together with your roommate you get that five percent 
damage to monsters increases. So another thing they've added is the shelter land and you must do these quests. Well, you had to do the step one, step two, step three, step four. And then obviously now here's the second chapter, which is construct the shelter land. So if you go to Snow Highlands, at least that's where I went. Yeah, Snow Highlands. And then you just recruit members, wipe out the infected supplies transport. You just do these simple tasks. And then the chapter three is going to be city defense, which is that's going to be fun to witness, I guess. I want to see what that is. That's just probably the uh, Snow Highlands factory boss fight. But um, the fight that the Dark Shift had, this boss is huge, by the way, it's among us. It's pretty big and we, you can do this every single day. So after the reset, you can do this again and again and again and get these juicy rewards. It gives you really good rewards. So earlier in the video, I said I will show you guys what is the new infrastructure thingy. So you can build infrastructures in your camp now as you can see and you can build balloons all that sort of crap but the thing is is it really worth to build these things in downtown because invasion is actually going to be affected by this and you're going to be lagging more so i don't think that it's really necessary to build these you know objects and props in your downtown camp because it's definitely going to cause you lag but other than that when you're not in the range of these objects it doesn't doesn't really lag as if you saw what just happened i just stutter there for a second when i left the zone and when i come back in the zone it lags again that's because the objects are loading in and yeah you can see I, i'm kind of laggy sometimes when i leave the zone let me show you again for example like see i just lagged again my character just stopped and yeah as soon as i leave the zone it just my game stutters and freezes so this is why you don't really want these objects and props in your camp. You can build them outside, which is, let's say, you can build it here if you want to, all these balloons there and there, but just don't build this in downtown. It definitely affects your game performance. Trust me, guys. So yeah, other than that, you can also build roads in your camp. As you can see, the blue lines indicates the roads built, and yeah, it's kind of cool. When you're doing patrols or something, you can literally just put your bike down and it automatically drives for you. It's kind of like AFK type of method. And sadly, we cannot build the roads until 11 outskirts, but that would give advantage to the raiders because the raiders can also use these navigation roads. It does cost nanoplastic and it does cost, you know, these composite building materials to build those. But it costs from the vault resources here it says composite building materials now to get those you can donate these composite building materials to the vault so and that's how it works when you donate for example let's just donate 100 and that's it you don't get anything you don't get contributions so there's almost no point to donate them in but I mean, if you want to build something or if you're running low, these materials, in order to build these things, you need to have donated into the vault the composite building material. So once you have enough, you can then just, you know, build these balloons, whatever you want, and you can build these roads outside of the camp. You cannot build roads in downtown, which is here. You can only build them outside of the downtown zone. And I don't think you can build them in the islands either. But yeah, guys, I know I'm just going to be doing the Dark Shift boss. So enjoy that. wouldn't say this is a huge update, but it isn't quite small either. It's actually an interesting update, especially with the cohab rings. That's kind of useful. It's going to help out a little. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Peace out. So for the boss, you don't really want to stay too close to him because you see what happens. He just releases these toxic clouds. So I just try to stay as far away as possible for him. Also, if you're doing this boss, make sure your skills on ultra firing range are maxed because as it says right here, max firing range of range weapons increased by 70. So, you know, if it's maxed out, you can shoot further away and you don't really have to be that close to him. LSS range is lower than KSG, by the way, so if you're using LSS, do note that your range is going to be lower. Although, the damage 
is not affected by the range. So if you're really close to him or you're too far away from him, you can see in the video that the damage is the same and it's not affected by the range. Other than that, there is literally no other tips and tricks for this. It's literally just stay away as much as you can and just spread out. You don't really want to be together with your teammates, except only when the minions are spawned. You don't want to get until that wave. You just want to kill the boss as soon as possible, headshot him until he dies, and hopefully you don't get to the minion wave. Like, you should be able to kill the boss in time until the minion wave.